Just like the great white sharks they share the ocean with, the British Trafalgar class submarines are silent killers, hunter killers, and like the submarines of World War II, they are feared and dreaded by those they hunt. These modern pirates, as Admiral Sir Arthur Wilson described submarines and those who crewed them in 1901, said of enemy submariners, they deserve to hang. With such a history behind them, it is perhaps unsurprising that those who operate and cruise submarines today revel in the infamy and the notoriety they create. The Trafalgar class submarines are state-of-the-art military machines designed as Cold War combatants, but with several upgrades and modernizations, the last of these submarines continues to operate into the 2020s. A ship of first Trafalgar class attack submarines undertook the first firing of Royal Navy Tomahawk cruise missiles in the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. In 1997, HMS Trafalgar circled the globe, sailing through both the Panama and Suez canals, being the first UK submarine to make that trip. In 2012 to 2013, HMS Trenchant spent more than 335 days on patrol away from the United Kingdom, the longest for any Royal Navy nuclear submarine. What is more, HMS Trafalgar was the first UK submarine fitted with rubber and echoic tiles. These tiles covered the hull and outer surfaces of the submarine as a method of reducing both radiated noise she would generate and reducing the effectiveness of enemy active sonar that may be searching for the vessel. The tiles absorb sound rather than reflect it. On the other hand, HMS Talent was the last British submarine to be launched down a slipway. These underwater platforms are able to hide at depths of more than 1500 feet or around 500 meters, although the exact dive depth is a closely guarded secret. This far down the ocean is dark, cold and hostile, perfect for a nuclear powered submarine lying in wait for unwary surface ships chugging along overhead. Stealthy, quiet and deadly, the Trafalgar class SSNs formed the backbone of the UK submarine force during the 1990s and into the early 2000s. The first of the T-boats, as they are commonly called, HMS Trafalgar, entered service in 1983, just a little too late for the 1982 Falklands War with Argentina. However, these submarines would make a trip to the Falklands a couple of times per year, just to remind Argentina that the Falklands remained British territory. Trafalgar class boats are essentially enhanced Swiftshore class submarines, although Trafalgar's did feature several improvements over their predecessors. Compartments underwent rearranging to consolidate and streamline the operations, sound and electronic support measures and radar rooms along with improvements to sonars and communications equipment. However, the Trafalgar class did inherit the special forces emphasis of some of the preceding swift shores. These had been equipped with a detachable dry deck shelter or DDS for a swimmer delivery vehicle, also known as an SDV, mini-sub. The Trafalgar class do operate with special forces, inserting and retrieving elite operators from the British SAS, SBS or Royal Marines. Within the Trafalgar's hull are three decks of continuous activity, with the boats basically separated into several different sections. Forward are located the main sleeping areas and an emergency escape hatch. The simple bunks, called racks or pits, and Navy parlance are stacked three high, one on top of the other, with a small space between each where sailors can crawl in and out. Behind this section is the control and command section. This is where the submarine is commanded, navigated and fought from. Known somewhat euphemistically as the hotel services section, this is where the eyes and ears of the ship, the sonar and radar are controlled from. Here's the home of the warfare department. The, war de the Warfare Department has control of the mind and teeth of the submarine. They operate the sonars, radars and weapons. Beneath the control segment are positioned the galley, mess areas for officers and senior and junior ratings. Ratings are called enlisted personnel in the US Navy. And below this the weapons handling area. The weapons are maintained and handled by the weapons engineering department who fall under the command of the weapons engineering officer. Moving further aft is the reactor compartment and anything to do with the ship's maneuvering and propulsion. The reactor system was an improvement over the earlier Swiftshore class. They are propelled by a Rolls-Royce pressurized water reactor and auxiliary diesel electric power. All submarines except Trafalgar were fitted with a pump jet propulsion system rather than a conventional propeller. Trafalgar had a seven bladed propeller. 
the reactor and associated systems can push the Trafalgars through the water at more than 30 knots. The engineering areas are under the watchful eyes of the Marine Engineering Department, who monitor and maintain the propulsion and power systems. The submarines make their own water, oxygen and electricity. These submarines can generate so much power that they could provide enough electricity to light a large town. When HMS Trafalgar first joined the Royal Navy submarine fleet, she worked out of the Devonport Naval Base along with earlier nuclear-powered Swiftshore class boats. These days, all British nuclear submarines will be stationed out of Fastlane in Scotland. Silently leaving their home ports, the Trafalgar class submarines would undertake a variety of different missions. These fleet submarines are able to operate independently or as part of a task force. A boat may be assigned with surveilling and adversary submarines as British and US submarines did in 1994 when they were tasked with tracking a Russian Victor III class nuclear submarine that itself was trying to monitor Royal Navy SSBNs and the SSBNs are the ballistic missile submarines. Attack submarines such as the Trafalgars are known as SSNs. When the T-Class first entered service, their principal role was to locate and in the case of war destroy enemy nuclear submarines, especially those carrying ballistic missiles such as the Soviet and later Russian Typhoon and Delta class SSBNs. If war had broken out, the Trafalgar class could have deployed ahead of a Navy task force screening for enemy submarines and intercepting them before they launched their weapons at Allied ships. When working with friendly warships within task groups, the submarines would be given an area to patrol, where enemy submarines may be expected, similar to a guard dog watching over its home and family. Within this area, the submarines can move about freely and hopefully avoid friendly fire scenarios. Other boats in the class, if they had gone on a war patrol, may have been tasked with a sea denial mission. Once in position of an enemy coastline, a submarine can deny enemy vessels access to the sea by picking off any ships and submarines as they leave the ports. In the scenarios outlined, the BAE heavyweight spearfish torpedoes would have seen extensive use. Carried by all seven submarines of the Trafalgar class, the Spearfish is fired from one of five torpedo tubes and may be used against both ships and submarines. The development of the torpedo occurred as a counter to the high speed and deep diving Soviet submarines entering service during the Cold War. The Alpha class being the most famous of these with reports in the 1980s saying it could achieve speeds of up to 45 knots underwater and dive more than 3,000 feet beneath the waves. The two-ton Spearfish torpedoes have a speed as high as 70 knots, with a classified diving depth. Armed with a 660-pound warhead, Spearfish can reach out and touch you at more than 50 kilometers or 30 miles. So 660 pounds, that's about 300 kgs. Spearfish is a guided torpedo, used in both wire guidance and an onboard sonar to find its victim. These highly advanced torpedoes can be programmed to even attack a specific part of a submarine. Aside from Spearfish, the Trafalgar class submarines can attack surface ships with the UGM-84 sub-launched harpoon missiles. These American-built sea skimming weapons are armed with a 488-pound or 220kg warhead, smaller than that of the torpedo, but they are significantly faster. The harpoons are launched from submarines' torpedo tubes at ships on the surface. The higher speed allows a quicker intercept of enemy ships, thereby greatly reducing the response time to the incoming threat. During the wars in Afghanistan, Libya and Syria, British T-class submarines took responsibility for launching Tomahawk cruise missiles with a 1,000-pound high-explosive warhead at enemy designated targets. A 1,000-pound warhead, that's around 450 kilograms. Tomahawk has a range of more than 1,000 miles, allowing the launch platform to cruise in a wide area from where it may fire the weapons well away from enemy countermeasures. The American-built Tomahawk, like the Harpoon, is launched from a submarine's torpedo tubes on British submarines. The Trafalgars do not have a vertical launch system, or VLS, like many US attack boats do. Once the missile has breached the water's surface, a jet engine powers the missile through the air where it flies at high subsonic speeds around 900 kilometers an hour or 550 miles an hour, that is about the speed of a modern airliner. The Block 3 and Block 4 Tomahawk cruise missile flies close to the ground, steering around and using terrain features to mask its approach from enemy radar. By keeping the missile low, the Tomahawk, also known as T-LAM, 
avoids radar guided defenses that could threaten manned aircraft. The weapon is incredibly accurate and may use different methods of navigation such as GPS for guidance. While in flight, the missile can send back images of what it sees with the targeting information updated as required. The missile has been in use with the Royal Navy Trafalgar class submarines since the late 1990s when the boats were modernized so that they could integrate the missile. Tomahawk gives the submarines the ability to make long range precision strikes. Due to the submarine's inherent stealth characteristics, especially so with the Trafalgar class boats, they are perfect for surveillance and intelligence missions around the world. The submarines would monitor naval ports, observe missile test launches, track the submarines of adversaries and keep unfriendly submarines away from following British SSBNs. As the Soviets and Russians both operated submarines, especially SSBNs in the Arctic, the Trafalgars would frequently patrol this region and it would every now and then crack through the ice, often with an American SSN. These were great publicity events sh and showed the Russians they were being watched and helped improve interoperability between Allied submarine forces. Still, before a Trafalgar class boat can challenge an enemy submarine, it has to find one. For this, the eyes and ears of the submarine beneath the waves is the domain of sonar and its highly trained operators. Fitted with world class sonar, these systems are so sensitive they can hear ships over 50 miles away. The submarines are fitted with different sonar arrays located around the submarine. The spherical sonar array in the bow of the boat necessitated the torpedo tubes being located aft of the bow to increase the sonar's effectiveness. Keep in mind these submarines were often claimed to be the quietest SSNs in the world when they entered service. The British said they were even less noisy than their conventional powered and highly successful Oberon class submarines. This made them excellent sonar platforms. The original Type 2020 sonar system was replaced in some of the Trafalgars with either the Type 2074 or Type 2076 sonars. These systems include a package of arrays such as the flank arrays mounted on either side of the hull, the bow sonar which is at the front of the submarine and the towed array. The towed array passive set is streamed on a long cable behind the submarine where it can listen for any submarines that may be following. The intercept sonar can tell if there are other active sonars transmitting in the vicinity of the submarine. Sonars located in the fin or sailors, the Americans would say, how are sonars used for communication? The submarines are fitted with two main classes of sonar, active and passive. Active sonar transduces emit an acoustic signal or pulse of sound into the water. Active is the one we are used to hearing in Hollywood movies with this distinctive ping. If an object is in the path of the sound pulse, the sound bounces off the object and returns an echo to the sonar. By determining the time between the emission of the sound pulse and its reception, the operators can determine the range and positioning of that object. Passive sonar systems are used primarily to detect noise from marine objects such as submarines or ships. Unlike active sonar, passive sonar does not emit its own signal, which is an advantage for military vessels that do not want to be found. Rather, it only detects sound waves coming towards it. Passive sonar cannot measure the range of an object. Multiple passive sonar devices may allow for triangulation of a sound source. As passive sonar only listens, it is not detectable by enemy submarines or ships. Active sonar, on the other hand, may be heard by enemy units. Aside from sonar, the Trafalgar class have radars for use on the surface. Wake detection devices were later fitted to the class as a means of finding submarines without using sonar. The wake homing devices are mounted on the outer forward casing and either side of the fin or sail. They include several visible spike-like probes. How they are used exactly is classified, but like similar Russian systems, it is thought they may detect water density, chemical composition and radiation. This gives the submarine a means of trailing another submarine outside of sonar. This may be increasingly important as enemy submarines get quieter. The class has a displacement of 5,200 tons dive, a length of 85.4 meters, that is around 280 feet, a beam or width of 9.8 meters or 32 feet, and can carry up to 30 tube launched weapons. However, if it's carrying mines, it can carry significantly greater numbers of mines. While the Trafalgar class are serious boats with a serious mission and highly disciplined ship's companies, they do conjure up extreme curiosity outside of those intimately familiar with these submarines. 
TV shows and books on these submarines have proven rather popular. A great example was of the TV show Heston's Mission Impossible in which celebrity chef Heston Blumenthal went on board HMS Turbulent attempting to spice up the menu for the 130 crew members. You can actually watch the episode on YouTube and it's well worth watching. The Trafalgar class submarines when entering service were among the most potent warships in existence. But they, like all SSNs, are no longer cheap alternatives to surface ships. A modern nuclear attack submarine like the Trafalgar's is at least the cost of a modern day destroyer and significantly more costly than a modern frigate. Today, only one Trafalgar class SSN remains in use, HMS Triumph, which is expected to leave service by 2025 as the new and more capable Astute class submarines gradually come online.